evening everybody. It's uh, Friday, 11th of November. Um, Remembrance Day, not Sunday, because that's the Sunday, and it's not Sunday today. Uh, Remembrance Day for a lot of people, um, and also one that I can remember because it's also my middle, middle child. I've got a middle child now. Um, my youngest daughter's birthday. So she turned three today. So we've had a, had a day of work, and we've been to a kind of farm place where you can see loads of animals and there's a big play area and we had a very nice lunch and then we picked my eldest up from school and went out for tea and it was all very nice and fun. So um, we'll start the weekend with a couple of drams um, as we normally do. So this particular one and you probably heard the noise because it was in a little tin with a couple of packing peanuts within to stop it rattling around the place <coughs> was this which is Glen Devon and it was a very kind donation by Mr X. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now, Glen Deveron is also known as Macduff. So you may, it, it's more regularly known as Glen Deveron, but there may be some very old bottlings lying around the place called Macduff. Um, and uh, the distillery itself is here. Um, it was founded in, nine, well, <clears throat> most places say it was founded in 1962. However, I have read on one website, Mort Madness, where he's, um, the guy that's writing it said that he spoke to people that actually work for um, their current owners, which is John Dewar and Sons, who said that they were actually running um, Spirit off in 1960. But we'll go with 1962, because that seems to be the general consensus. Um, and it was a consortium of businessmen and who, who set it up. A, a couple have had um, a couple had involvements in. I think one had involvements in Deanston and Talibar Dean. So it was kind of you know they were involved in the whiskey industry, but not anybody worth remembering the names for. Um, now it's been kind of Macduff Glendever and Macduff Glendever for a while. Um, Macduff potentially because the land that the distillery was built on was previously owned by a Duff family. Um, and Glen Deveron because the water source is from the River Deveron. Um, now apparently, and I don't quite know how or why, but in about, about the mid-90s, I think it was 1994 I read it as, Diageo claimed the trademark for Macduff and therefore it's become Glen Deveron. But before then it seemed to be one or the other and I don't even know why Diageo took the trademark for Macduff because this isn't owned by them currently. Um, unless they were just doing it to piss off who owned them now. So it was um, uh, tootling along quite nicely as a sort of a business operation until 1972 when it was bought by William Lawson's Limited. Now William Lawson's I covered off earlier in the challenge. I can't remember when, it was when I was doing the run of blended whiskies. It's very, very big overseas. Um, and that's because in 1980 it was then bought by Martini and Rossi and in southern Europe, so you're looking at France, Spain, Italy in particular, as you would expect with it being Martini and Rossi, it's very, very big down there, the William Lawson's blend. And as a result, Glen Deveron is also very popular down there. Um, one place I did read said that it actually sneaks into the top 30 single malts worldwide uh, in terms of sales because of the amount that it sold as a single malt whiskey down in that um, part of Europe. So it's... Pr not, it's not that you can't find it in the UK, but it's tricky. Whereas, uh, sort of mainland Southern Europe, it is quite prevalent. Um, so, Bacardi bought Martini Rossi in 1992. They offloaded it onto their subsidiary, John Dewar and Sons, um, who are essentially the whiskey arm of Bacardi, and that's who it's under now. Now, this particular one, um, interestingly, um, it, I put the map up of where it is. It's on the very far eastern edge of um, like the Speyside region, but on the bottle and the, the packaging itself, it still calls itself a Highland single malt, whereas it's actually Speyside. Now, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't make much of a difference, but it is kind of confusing if you're looking at lists or you, you're kind of like looking at a right, I want to, um, I want to find all the Highland whiskies I can get, and this is a Speyside, that sort of thing. Um, it's simply one of a bit of terminology that they, they've decided that they want to call themselves Highland rather than Speyside, maybe to differentiate themselves, who knows. Um, this is a slightly older bottling. I think this is about, I think this is bottled in about 2000, um, doing a bit of research. This is what it looks like now. So they've had at least one rebranding since then. But again, it's a 10 year old. Um, if you want the latest version, it's about 32 quid at Master of Malt, which isn't that bad for an entry level single malt. Um, it's 40% and, um, I think it's sherry matured, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, 
Now, I've had neither a Glendeverin nor a Macduff before, or at least not to my recollection. So, this is new to me. So, this is one where you know it's going to be tricky to find in the UK, but sometimes it's a case of well, you can't find it in the UK because it's not very good and they don't want to sell it over here. This is simply because it's so big um, in Southern Europe that they don't really need to do an awful lot over here um, because they know they're going to sell it down here, down there. Um, nice kind of slightly burnt umber colour to it. I would guess a colouring has been added to this. Considering it's a 10 year old and the, the depth of the colour, it wouldn't surprise me if colouring has been added. I'm not actually sure if it's going to say on the... No, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking at the back, the back of the la the back of the, the tube for this, because there's no back label on the miniature. But it does actually say it's William Lawson Distillers Limited. Um, so they are still using that as a sort of, um, almost a kind of give it some kind of provenance as it were. Um, but yeah, there's nothing to indicate colouring has been added, but with a miniature, it's unusual that it would anyway. I'm willing to bet that colouring has been added particularly on the nose, because there is a slight artificiality to it. What a weird nose. There's a kind of, um, like a tin of paint smell to it. And a little bit of um, felt tip pens that have got that real acetone nail varnish feel to it. It's, it's not, it doesn't clear your nose out and make, start making you feel high. You know, like when you're a school kid and you were sniffing it, going, oh, I'm going to get high. Uh. And then a teacher would turn around and tell you that a kid died two years ago in a local school and never to do that again. It's not quite as, as full on as that, but it's definitely there. It's a definite, slightly chemically edge to it. It's not unpleasant, but it's just a little bit off-putting. There is a bit of, there's, there's kind of a background of maltiness there, but it's really struggling to come through the slightly chemical, slightly artificial. It's a slightly, it's not, it's not there on the fore, but it's just, it's just slightly off-putting. It's just a little bit, yeah, odd. Luckily, it's not there on the palette. It's not actually that bad. It's, not, it's quite a, I'd say not a full rich mouthfeel, but it's a medium mouthfeel. There is some weight to it and a bit of depth. It's quite sweet. And there's a touch of nuttiness to it as well. There's a slight hazelnut character. It's not quite peanut brittle, but it's almost there. There is a slight caramel feel to it. It's a bit more of a, a smooth caramel rather than the, the slightly burnt caramel that you get from peanut brittle. This is a bit more of a smoother, almost. I'll tell you what it actually reminds me of. Now, was it Quality Street or Roses where one of them had a hazelnut inside soft caramel with chocolate around it? And I can't remember whether it was Roses or Quality Street. One of those two um, mixed chocolate boxes that you used to get had one where it was a whole hazelnut with soft caramel wrapped around it and then it was inside chocolate and it's kind of that it's not peanut brittle it's not um it's not caramelized sugar where there is a slight burnt edge to it this is a bit more soft caramel definite nut in there definite hazelnuts it really is but this caramel undercurrent works really well with it It's not that bad actually. It's not too bad at all. It feels like it maybe needs just a little bit more depth, just a little bit more richness to it. Almost a bit more of a multi character to really finish everything off. Um, but it's very drinkable. It's very silky, very, very easy to drink. Um, and this, this really would do a, not a non-whiskey drinker, but a whiskey drinker that, um, just isn't really particularly bothered, but just wants something nice and smooth. Um, which, working at the whiskey shop, used to be a common phrase. What does he drink? Well, he drinks anything, but he just likes something that's smooth. All right, that doesn't narrow it down that much, but okay, this would, would be a bit, a bit of a go-to. 
you know, there's nothing, there's nothing particularly wacky about it. There's nothing particularly outstanding. There is this slight nuttiness to it, but it's it's not obvious enough that you're going to go, oh my god, I, I get nuts every single time. But it is sort of there. Um, but it gives you a, a, an interesting um, offset to the the smooth uh, caramel that you get to it. But there's nothing there's nothing harsh about it. There's nothing wacky. There's nothing out there. There's nothing particularly pungent or smoky or anything like that. It's just it's a very very easy drinking space side whiskey. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's it's quite pleasant indeed. It's not amazing, but it's pleasant enough that I'd happily drink the rest of the miniature if I wasn't going to move on to another one and doing one every day. So I can't fault that. I really can't. That is that is surprisingly good. And I can kind of see why it's really popular as well um, in the strong market that they've got because the really, really popular brands tend to be the ones that are the ones that are most easy to drink and the most inoffensive. And that is inoffensive and easy to drink to a tea. But that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. That is not bad at all. And for 32 quid a bottle, if that new, if the new version is the same as that, because it's obviously an older bottling, for 32 quid a bottle, if you can maybe find that on some kind of deal down to 25 quid, that is very, very good value for money for a Scotch single more. Um, and would do really, really well as a present for somebody that you're not quite sure what they're like, or is a bit non-committal as to what they do like. You're not going to go wrong. You really aren't going to go wrong with that at all. Right, quick rinse out, and then we'll crack on with another one. Cheers.